So you're prepping for a quant interview. You've got your Python on lock, you've memorized Black Shoals front to back, maybe you've even dabbed in some stochastic calculus here and there. You're feeling pretty good. And then the interviewer hits you with something like a casino pays you three pounds with probability 0.4, costs you two pounds with probability 0.5 and pays 10 pounds with probability 0.1. Should you play? Q panic. Your mind races, your palm sweat, you start mentally flipping through flashcards you made back in 2021 and haven't looked at since. And suddenly it hits you. You don't need more formulas. What you need is intuition. Today I want to help you actually understand probability and statistics in a way that a quant thinks about it. So no cramming, no memorizing 80 definitions, just clear thinking, real world intuition, and the kind of concepts that will actually help you get through these quant interviews and look smart while doing it. I'm Joanna and I'm an Oxford mathematics graduate that went into the world of quant finance and started working as a quant developer roughly six months ago. In this video, I'm going to explain to you everything that you need to know about getting good at probability style questions for quant interviews. So yeah, let's get right into it. If you're going into quant finance, probability and statistics are very much not optional. They're not even just helpful, they are very foundational. And that's because whether you're pricing derivatives, backtesting a strategy, running simulations or managing risk, you are constantly working in a world of pure uncertainty. That's what probability is. I would say that it is actually the maths of uncertainty. And statistics, well, that's what helps you make sense of data in a noisy, very chaotic world. So for example, if you're pricing an option with various Monte Carlo simulations, you're relying on expected value and distributions. If you're building a trading strategy, you're probably evaluating some signal quality using conditional probability. If you're managing risk, you're thinking about fat tails, value at risk and distributions that just don't behave nicely at all. Even just deciding whether to trust a backtest result or whether a market outlier an anomaly is real, that's all probability and stats. So yeah kind of important. Luckily, learning the basics in probability theory is not at all gatekept anymore. In fact, there are so many great resources these days that you can get started with for free, out of which my favorite has just got to be brilliant, who are also very, very kindly sponsoring today's video. If you've ever just stared blankly at formulas and wished that there was a way to fill those concepts instead of just memorizing them, well, brilliant might be your secret weapon. They've built interactive, hands-on courses that cover maths, computer science, data analysis, and science that guide you through each idea with puzzles, visualizations, and immediate feedback. Struggle with expected value? Brilliant introduction to probability course breaks it down with real-world games and interactive simulations. Are you stuck on Bayesian inference? Their Bayesian probability module walks you through trading signals, examples, step by step. If you want to master regression methods and forecasting, well, their regression and classification track shows you exactly how to code and to interpret thousands of trials in bare minutes. I've been using Brilliant Daily to sharpen my intuition, especially their Casino Probability Mini Challenge, where you compute odds for poker hands and blackjack and see the house edge in action. It's a lot of fun, and just like all of their other courses, they are presented in fun, very interactive ways, while also keeping you accountable and on track. Needless to say, Brilliant has been quite a trusty companion for me, throughout university and beyond, sharpening my probability and data science skills along the way, which have all proven to be really essential in my day-to-day -day job. So yeah, go to brilliant.org slash Roman to get started for free, and you'll also get a 20% off an annual premium subscription. And trust me, if you want to turn those abstract formulas into intuition that you can actually feel, Brilliant is the fastest way to get there. All right, let's jump back in. I will be mentioning more resources as we go along, but so far so good. We have our basics covered, so let's see what's next. So how do we actually get good? There are, I wanna say, five core concepts that you have to nail, and not just in theory. Like you need to get to a point where without being dramatic at all, you actually feel them in your bones. The first one is expected value and variance. Okay. First things first, you've got expected value, that's your bread. And the variance, that's your butter. So if you're walking into a quant interview without this, you're basically just trying to eat toast without anything on it. So it's dry, it's crumbly, and it's really sad. To put it into a more mathematical definition, expected value is the long run average outcome of a random variable. It tells you what to expect on average if you repeated the experiment 
a gazillion times. Variance tells you how much it might jump around this average. An example problem that I can give you to dip your toes into this concept would be something like, let's say you're offered a game that says you've got a 40% chance of winning three pounds, 50% chance of losing two pounds, and 10% chance of winning 10 pounds. Should you play this game? The second concept that I think is quite essential would be the common distributions. Well, these distributions are like ice cream flavors. Most people love the normal distribution, smooth, symmetrical, never really offends anyone, but there's a lot more out there. You've got the chunky Poisson, the binary binomial, the spicy geometric, you know, it's quite a whole freezer of ice creams, I would say. The theory here, the mathematical theory is quite vast and I would actually strongly recommend that you get familiar with the actual mess behind the scenes. I would strongly suggest either from some basic probability textbooks or online lectures. But to give you a bit of an insight here, distribution describes the likelihood of different outcomes. So the ones that you should know. We've got a binomial, which is a fixed number of trials, two outcomes, for example, coin tosses, Poisson, this is a number of events in a fixed interval, for example, the trades per hour, normal, this is continuous and symmetric, often used for returns, and geometric, which is the number of trials until the first success. And we've got a conditional probability and basis theorem. This is the part of the interview where you're this close to crying. Conditional probability is the mass version of it depends. And basis theorem, well, it's just conditional probability with flair. Let's get into the theory behind this a tiny bit. So we have that a conditional probability of an event A conditioned on another event B is given by the probability of A and B happening both at the same time, dividing by the probability of B happening. And basis theorem, well, he basically flips the direction into saying that the probability of A given B is the probability of B given A times the probability of A, all divided by the probability of B. This is used to update beliefs when new information comes in, and I will be talking more about this in a bit, given that this is an absolutely essential tool that you need in your arsenal if you want to go into any quant finance career. But I've got a small example problem here, just to give you a bit of an appetizer. So let's say that you receive a trading signal that's correct 90% of the time, but the base rate of profitable trades is just 5%. What's the actual chance your trade is profitable given this signal? Then we've got the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. Well, these two are the unsung heroes of quant finance. They're why we average returns, why we trust models, and why we pray that our sharp ratio actually means something. To give you more intuition behind the theory, even though, again, I would advise you to study this in more depth, we have that of large numbers, well, as the number of trials increases, the sample mean would just converge to the expected value, and the central limit theorem, well, the distribution of the sample mean becomes approximately normal as the sample size grows, even if the underlying distribution isn't normal. And lastly, we've got Markov chains and stochastic processes. And to put it very, very simply, Markov chains are like drunk people in a maze. Wherever they go depends only on where they are now and not at all how they got here. Perfect metaphor for financial markets, right? Well, mathematically, a Markov chain is a sequence of events where the next state depends only on the current state. They are normally used for modeling credit ratings, regime changes, and even volatility sometimes. All right, so I think that there is quite a big gap between how we might want to approach problems in an academic setting versus when dealing with financial markets. And here's the shift that helped me the most. Don't just learn probability like a student, learn it like a quant. And let me show you what I mean. Say you flip a coin a thousand times. What's the probability that you get 520 or more heads? Well, the mathematical solution here is to write down a massive binomial sum, then you need to calculate it. Well, if we think more deeply about this, like a quant, we know that actually we can approximate it with a normal distribution. We have that a mean is 500 because the coin would either be a heads or a tails because it's an unbiased coin. The standard deviation is just the square root of a thousand times a half times a half, which is root 250, which is about 15.8. So 520 is about 1.26 standard deviations above the mean. From a Z table, that gives us a probability of about 10%. And that's how you solve quant style. You simplify the maths without losing the logic. And the same goes for simulations, actually. Let's say that you've got a strategy that wins 10 pounds with 60% probability and loses 12 pounds with 40% probability. This is obviously a very simple scenario and the expected profit can immediately be computed mathematically, but in a more complex setting, here is what might be beneficial. Write a little Python script to simulate it 10,000 times. See what your expected profit looks like. 
Is it consistent? How much does it vary? So to summarize, I would say that the main difference between thinking like a student and like a quant is that you're not just proving a point, you're actually building intuition. A bit of a deja vu here. Let's circle back to one of the most misunderstood yet powerful tools in probability, which is Bayesian thinking. If classical probability is like guessing with a coin, Bayesian probability is like playing poker. You keep updating your beliefs based on what's already happened. And the math behind it, I would say, is actually quite chef's kiss. To remind you, the core equation reads probability of A given B is the probability of B given A times the probability of A all divided by the probability of B. This is literally how machines update beliefs in machine learning and also how quants update trading models after some new information drops. It is beyond essential and trust me, it is actually so satisfying to apply this in problems. So to give you a quick example here, Say that you're trading a signal-based strategy. And let's say that the strategy gives you a buy signal 40% of the time. Historically, 70% of the time the signal was right and the price actually went up. Overall, the market, you know this, only goes up 50% of the time. And you want to know, if you see a buy signal, what's the probability that the market will actually go up? So now, instead of just blindly trusting the signal, you're making decisions based on an updated information. And that's what Bayesian thinking really is like. It's a constant update loop based on new evidence. It's like being in a long-term relationship with probability, you know? You grow, you adapt, you evolve together. Isn't that nice? The areas of quant finance where we use this all the time are, to only name a few, machine learning, Bayesian inferences behind tons of ML models, really, Trading signals, basically every signal is a conditional probability. And risk management, you're not eliminating risk, you're actually managing uncertainty. So you've nailed the theory, you build the intuition, and now it's game time. Let's walk through some classic quant interview problems that test your real understanding of probability. And no, they're not at all about memorizing any formulas, they're about how you think. And I will briefly mention a theoretical mathematical concept that they relate to so that you can easily go and figure out the exact numerical solution on your own. So we've got the first problem, which is the biased coin flip. Let's say that you have a biased coin that lands heads with probability 0.6. What's the probability of getting exactly three heads out of five flips? The mathematical concept, well, that's quite easy, right? It's the good old binomial distribution. Let's move to this conditional probability twist. Well, let's say that a trader says my strategy wins 70% of the time on Mondays. You know it only wins 50% overall. If it did win today, what's the probability that it was Monday? Well, if M is the event that it was Monday and W is the event that you won, this sounds like the probability of M given W. So yeah, the maths concept, well, nothing other than basis theorem. Let's look at this, which is the two dice trap. Well. Let's say that you roll two fair six-sided dice. What is the probability that their sum is eight, given that at least one die is five? This isn't just a brute force question. It tests whether you can condition properly, really. The approach is literally just going back to the definition of probability. So if we look at a sample space, this is all pairs where at least one die is five and favorable outcomes, well, from those, just count how many sum to eight. And yeah, you're done. Of course, books centered on quant interview problems, such as Heard on the Street or A Practical Guide to Quantitative Finance Interviews, or even websites with various question banks, such as Quant Guide or Classdoor, have many more of these that you can use as practice once you master the theory. And briefly for completeness, I can give you some essential tips for solving questions in interviews. Clarify assumptions. Is the coin biased? Are they equally likely? Is some replacement happening somewhere? Then break it down. Don't leap to formulas, least possible outcomes first. Number three is to use toy simulations wherever possible. Sometimes a five line Python script is better than five minutes of pure guessing. And the last one, but probably the most important of them all, is to narrate your thinking. Interviewers care more about your process than just getting it right. They want to see how you think and if you have the critical skills required on the job. So yeah, to recap, how do you go from base who to someone who can actually crush quant interviews? Let's bring all the math concepts that you need to ace together. We've got expected value, tells you the average outcome. We've got the variance and the standard deviation, tells you how wild those outcomes might be. 
We've got the distributions, which help you model reality, whether they are normal, binomial, Poisson, and so on. We've got basis theorem, which helps you update your beliefs. We've got a law of large numbers. The more you repeat a random process, the closer you get to the true probability. The central limit theorems, which tells you why things tend to look normal when you average enough of them. Monte Carlo simulations is pretty much just brute force simulations of randomness. And Markov chains, which are systems where the next step only depends on the current state and not on the past. And to finish it off, to give you a five-step, very simple checklist for quant interviews, for a quant career really. One, master the theory. Don't just memorize, try and actually understand every concept. Two, you need to solve real problems. Use simulations, get your hands dirty a tiny bit, it really helps. Three, build your intuition. If a result feels wrong, test it. Don't just trust your gut here, trust your actual code. Four, practice interviews. Sites like LeetCode, Glassdoor, Quant Guide, and the book Heard on the Street should be your best friends for all of these. And lastly, visualize everything. Plots, simulations, animations, whatever floats your boat really, it helps enormously. And once you get into plotting some very nice graphs here and there, you won't be able to stop. It is that satisfying. If you made it this far, congrats. You now probably know more about probability than 90% of the population or something. So yeah, whether it's a trading desk, a hedge fund, or impressing your friends with some conditional probability facts over brunch, you are pretty much ready. Definitely do check out the resources though that I mentioned and don't forget how important it is to nail the basic theory behind everything. I really hope that this has been helpful for you and that it has given you some actionable steps. Don't forget if you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more maths and quant content and hit that bell to be notified every single time that I post a new video. For more of me, you always have my Instagram down in the description below. I'm definitely a lot more active on there. And yeah, thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next one. And remember, in quant interviews, as in life, always update your priors. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline. I want you by my head.